What you're seeing in front of you is the new Smooth 5S from Jury. And there are a couple of things that I want to tell you I like and especially I don't like. So today we're going to go through a deep dive on this gimbal to see if this is the right one for you. Now I do have an in-depth review on the DJI Osmo Mobile 6, so if you want to see that, go check it out. But I will be doing a deep comparison between this and the DJI in the next video. Okay, so like everything on my channel, this is going to be a 100% honest review, non-sponsored, no affiliates. This I purchased for 1300 RMB, which is around 178 US dollars at the current exchange rate. That's quite expensive for a mobile phone gimbal. And this is the basic combo. Now, if you want it more advanced, you can purchase the advanced combo, which comes with a carry case and a magnetic light. I don't really use the carry bag at all with my gimbals, especially for a mobile phone gimbal, you want to be compact. Now, for the light itself, for $30, you can get a lot better options than a magnetic light. That's very small. But I guess the functionality is that it's portable, it's plug and play. So basically you're buying for convenience and the ecosystem. But personally, if you really need a light, I will purchase say a Aperture MC light, which is a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot more brighter and it's RGB and it's magnetic and it has a lot more functions. The basic combo, you get the gimbal, the tripod and a USB cable, that's it. Cosmetic wise, this looks absolutely amazing, I have to say. It looks like Jimmy has been moving away from black to a white color theme. It appeals to a lot of the younger generation as well as girls. And does it resemble any gimbals you've seen before? Well, yeah, the Jury M3 looks pretty much identical in terms of color themes. Uh, you can check out that review in my channel as well. So I've done reviews for every single gimbal that's come out from Jaguri. Build quality, I think it's pretty good for this price range. It feels exactly like the bigger gimbals that you've used from Jaguri. You've got composite and plastic, and then you've got a rubber hand grip here. Um, so you're getting a very nice ergonomic feel. But you can tell straight away, this thing isn't small, nor is it light. I wouldn't say this is compact because this is as small as it gets. Well, I guess you could remove the tripod leg and then you would have a slightly smaller gimbal, but you know, not something you can fit in your pocket. Well, being larger in size do have a few positivities. One is the ability to have all of these functions, buttons, also the battery life. This whole body is consists of their battery. So compared to the DJI, this thing is a little bit longer lasting. So if you're commercial work, if you're constantly streaming on your phone, if you're traveling and you know, battery means a lot to you, this one will be, I think, a good choice. Quickly, let's go through the buttons, okay? And I just wanna show you, you've got all these buttons at the front on the side. This is a dial for the focus and the zoom. And on the back, you've got the USB charger, uh, and then this is the lock function for the gimbals. You have the function button and the power on button. No screen at the front, but there is a mini LED on the top right here, which shows the five different modes you can switch just by clicking one of these buttons. Slide on, unlock the gimbals, and then all you have to do is turn it on, and there you go. You know, because the phone isn't that heavy, most of the time you don't have to have 100% perfect balance. As you can see, this is not 100% in the middle of my phone. As long as you have the weight kind of distributed, you know, left and right, kind of in the middle, you're gonna get away with it. And by the way, if you wanna go in portrait mode, now you do have to do this manually yourself. So all you have to do is spin, and now you're in portrait mode, just like that. It has the usual modes, pan follow right now, which basically goes left and right. We also have the lock mode, which locks all axes, like this. Follow mode, which follows all directions. POV mode, which follows a 360 degree of any direction you point it at. And then we have the vortex mode, which the phone tilts upwards and you have to point forward like a shotgun. And then you can go forward and you can spin like that if you wanted to. And like Jurian's gimbals, double tap, recenters, triple tap, it's a selfie mode. Now, one of the features that's been coming to a lot of Jurian gimbals is the built in light. You've got one right here, so all you have to do is hold on to the function button and it should turn on. There you go. How bright you say? Well, we will test this out once we go outside later at night. Now, one thing to keep in mind, a lot of these functions don't work with the default camera. You would need to use the Jurian app. So let's go through the Jurian app with you. So Jurian comes with two apps. Now there is the basic one, which is called the ZY Cami, and then there's the professional, professional star cam. I just feel like it's a little bit confusing for users first time, you know, which app to use, but for you beginners, just use the basic ZY Cam. It's more than enough and it has most of the functions. It's gonna detect your phone and automatically it's brought into the video screen. Pretty easy. Now on the left, we have the zoom function. Okay, as you can see. 
and then there's the okay now the flickers in between the screens is because it's leveraging the three cameras on my iPhone so the wide angle the telephoto and then the main camera right so it's switching between these cameras at the three times zoom see right there now we're back to the main camera and then we'll go back right there now we're in the ultra wide zoom in terms of focus basically you push down and you can change the focus but unfortunately it doesn't work on this app you will need to switch to the pro app to have access at least with my phone to access the focus i just wish that they had everything in just one app instead of having two okay now for active track all you have to do is drag and hold and you've got it locked on and all you have to do is just move left and right and you should be able to track automatically just like that see i'm not doing anything now if you go too fast right you're going to lose it okay and that's because we're very close to the subject now it does happen with these softwares sometimes if you're too close or if you're zoomed in too much you're going to lose the subject unfortunately i wish it was better at tracking but we will be comparing this with the dji to see how well both tracks okay so now we're in selfie mode i'm using the selfie camera on my phone there is beautification so for all your girls out there for your tiktokers out there you can turn on beautification automatically and wow you know who is that guy right and then you can slim your face you can smooth if that's not enough you can brighten your face if you need to you can make your eyes larger uh, you can lighten your face even more and then you can add a little bit of rosy cheeks hey don't judge a person by its cover a lot of people use this and it's a welcome feature otherwise they wouldn't have it in both this and the DJI app there's also functions so you can shoot high frame rates you can also switch between manual and auto which i really like so for the professionals out there you can set your iso your shutter uh, and, and that's pretty good during your shoot or you can just leave it on automatic and you don't have to worry about a thing and of course underneath here you have a couple of other functions you have gesture control you can turn that on and it's recording there you go so it's working see now if you go too fast it just lost me let's try that again okay it's going to follow me and we're going to start recording hey how's it going yeah pretty good now if i go a little bit fast okay now okay and it just lost me there so you know that's a limitation you got to keep in mind now i don't know this is the latest firmware by the way and it's not a production unit so i'm a little bit disappointed with that performance let's take a photo there you go okay so that works now underneath there are a few other modes as well so let's have a look we've got video mode we've got panorama okay so you've got slow motion as well and you have dolly zone you also have time lapse and hyperlapse okay there's also smart shooting and i believe this is just a couple of examples of how you can uh, replicate the shots that's been done in here and then you just follow its same movement and you can get the similar shot it's kind of like a guide for beginners right but this is the basic app now I want to show you the professional app so let's open this this is the professional app as you can straight away this is in landscape mode so I'm gonna turn it around just to show you in landscape mode there you go now you do have a lot more extra features straight away you can see there is a histogram underneath there's a you know, waveform right so these features are pretty much for pro levels it's even got an audio meter right there so it's picking up everything and it's doing its job you know you can set your shutter speed your white balance your frame per second you can zoom in as well and you can see that and with a touch of a button you can now focus okay you can shift focus so uh, you can there you go there's my hand and then I can shift back right so switching between these two apps are pretty quick because it is bluetooth enable so straight away it's going to detect your phone and it's going to activate that's really good on the bottom right you can see there are other features like for example LUTs and zebras and grid lines these are pretty good there's a lot of LUTs so most of them you can use say you know you want to use c-log i can download this and then i can place it on and straight away you're getting some kind of filmic uh replication now not all of them are free like i said the one with the p on top that's prime users so you have to buy or you can sign up for like a membership on a monthly basis uh, but yeah not everything is free here okay now we're done with the app now before we go outside i just want to show you the rotation the limitations or the clearance of this gimbal just to show you some of the movements that we can do and i think this is probably one of the wily 
And I think this is probably one of the flexible gimbals you can use on a mobile phone because a lot of the newer gimbals these days, the, the smaller ones especially, they're very limited in motion range. So this one has that ability and that's because it's so big, right? So you have the caveats there. Okay, first is landscape mode, okay? So as you can see, now I'm gonna put this in lock mode. I can go all the way down to about here, right? And then any more, it starts to tilt. Now as I move up, Okay, so that's 180 degrees, and I can keep going backwards to about there, 270 degrees, and any more is going to start tilting. Now, in terms of left and right roll movement, let's have a look. So if I go about here, and that's it, 40 degrees, maybe 45, and then, yeah. Same with the other side. So if you move to the right a little bit, there you go. 45 degrees either way. However, if you do put it in POV mode, I just want to show you. So you can go any direction you want. Right, because it's going to follow the direction, right? And it's able to keep up without shitting itself. Okay, so there's no vibrations, there's nothing happening going on. The gimbal is pretty good, uh, fairly smooth, and it's able to follow your movement all the way through. Not all gimbals can do that. Okay, once again, we're doing the same test in portrait mode. So as we move down, okay, it's going to hit my top. So I can push the phone a little bit downwards so then I can get that clearance okay so that's not a problem right now it's the same degree of 270 degrees and by the way if you're facing down like this and if you double tap it's gonna switch so you can hold it going forward or backwards so that's a good function it works both in landscape and portrait mode in this direction as I move up okay so that's not a problem and then as I kind of come down to here it's gonna hit the bottom of my gimbal so that's something to keep in mind. Now, you either move it all the way up, so it clears that, right? But then as you move down, you're gonna hit the top. This is an iPhone 13 Pro, by the way, so that's the size I'm referring to. But if you have a smaller phone like this, um, you shouldn't have a problem. But yeah, this is an iPhone 13 Pro. And the roll is the same, 45 degrees left and right. Okay, so with that done, let's go outside. We're gonna see how well it tracks and how well it performs in a real life situation. Are some couple of casual shots we did outside in different modes the first one is in pan follow just following my cameraman going forward fairly smooth no problems here now is a low down panning to the right uh, locked focus but you can see there is some jitter in the z-axis but i am shooting fairly casually here as well Here's another low down shot, just panning forward, following my movement. This is shot in the wide angle mode. Finally, we have the vortex mode. I have to say it is better than the competitors and it's a infinite loop. So by that, I mean you can constantly spin to the right or left regardless, whereas some gimbals have a limited rotation. The active track is able to pick up your face in most scenarios and it does a fairly decent job. Now this is both walking and running. During my running phase you can see it is overall fairly stable. You are going to see some jitters. A good way to tell is to focus on the background rather than on me and you can see some jitters but this is common in a lot of the handheld gimbals these days if you're not careful. Now just a test of active track with obstacles in front. If you're going fast enough, you are able to pick up your subject and continue the track. However, if you do slow down for a long period of time or the subject is being blocked for a consistent amount, you are going to lose the subject. And now this is a fairly complex test. I've tried to use two subjects here uh, to actively track the person. Now as I turn around, you can see it's actively trying to figure out what is the subject and what is not. It's doing a fairly good job, it's able to retract the subject, but eventually you can see it's slowly shifting away from the subject uh, and it's more focused on the actual baby cradle. And finally, this is a fairly extreme test where I try to hide the subject behind a bush and to see how long the software will continue track or predict the movement of the subject. And as you can see, it's going to lose the subject eventually. And this is expected with 
all gimbal softwares in the market today. Finally is a real stabilization test. None of the footage are post-processed, so this is as raw as you are going to see. The first test is using the main camera, just walking forward in lock mode. Overall, very stable, I had no problems. We did the same test again while running. You are going to see jitters here, but overall I think it's not too bad. It is still focused straight on, like there's no tilt or shift in camera angle. And now the second test is where I'm using the telephoto lens at three times zoom. And this is where you are going to see extra shakes or vibrations. He was able to lock on in the same direction as I started here with very minimum shift in angle. And once again running, well, this is an extreme test, something you might not experience all the time, but I just wanna show you the jitters that you might be experiencing if you did run at a telefocal length. I'm gonna give you my two cents, the things that I like and I don't like. Now, I like the design, it looks great. I like the gimbals. It has a lot of flexibility, a lot of movement that's allowed for a gimbal like this. I like the battery life. Even though it says 24 hours, I wasn't able to use the whole thing. So two days use, I think with one of these is perfect. I like the modes that it have, especially the lock mode without actually pressing the trigger button, which it doesn't happen on the DJI. The things that I don't like, well, it's a little bit big in terms of a mobile gimbal, right? It's not very compact and it is a little bit heavier. So that's the caveat there. Uh, I don't like the fact that you have two different apps, whereas I think one app will be suffice for beginners and professional. Why not just combine them all? The third thing that I don't like is the screen or the lack of, there's only a very little slim gap that you can tell which mode you're on. And during outside shoots, especially during sunny days, it's really hard to see. You will have to depend on your app to know which mode that you're in. And finally is the price. I feel like it's a little bit steep for something like this, especially if you're going after the combo pack. I feel like having this extra accessory of a light and costing extra couple of hundred dollars is a little bit, bit too much. Now the basic combo, as of today, I did see a promotion for 999. So that's the same price as the Osmo Mobile 6. I will be doing a in-depth review of both of them in the coming days probably uh, by Sunday you should see it already uh, I'll try to get it out as soon as I can and then you can judge which one is best suited for you okay until then I'll see you next one